Good morning, everybody. So today, an overview of uh, the bridge pattern. So let's see theory, let's see an example, and then let's discuss about um, the pros and the cons um, in the end. So a bit of theory. So let's say you have a family of object uh, one, uh, which has property x, y, w, and a family of, of object two with the properties x, y, uh, z. And you want to craft a feature A, which is just X plus um, Y. So how to avoid to declare, define feature A twice, like for family one and then again for family two. And you can see a problem of scalability here. If you have a third family with property X and Y and you need to calculate feature A, right? So that's the aim of the um, uh, bridge pattern. The key here is to rely on an interface to calculate your feature A. So anyone who wants to um, access to the uh, feature A calculation will have to complain to that blue interface, feature A. So your bridge is then the green arrow between interface feature A and the feature A. So let's see how it goes uh, with an example. OK, so let's see an example. So. For instance, um, we have a um, volume uh, calculator, which is the, the feature I was talking about earlier. So this track will uh, hold an object, um, like a geometrical object, which we can just simply call uh, object. So let's define it. So an object will be um, then an interface regarding what we just said. And let's say um, an object uh, is exposing um, a first interface which is a, a perimeter and uh, height both float so then uh, our volume calculator can simply um, calculate um, the volume of an object so here we are defining a, a receiver method called volume uh, it's going to return a float as well and we can just say that the it's using the encapsulated object, so calculator dot object dot perimeter, invoking the perimeter method, multiplied by the calculator dot object dot height, simply like that. So you can see that line sixteen is uh, our bridge basically. So our volume calculator is is um, calculating the feature against an interface and not an implementation. So um, let's give an example of that. Uh, let's implement a tri triangular object. So it's going to be a struct, and we want to implement that um, object interface. So we have a struct called triangular object. So we implement object. Then you have the two methods uh, there, perimeter and height. Uh, just a quick uh, interruption. So for a triangle, the perimeter is calculated with the height uh, multiplied by the base divided by 2 that you can have on the graph here. So let's define that for our uh, triangular object, so the height, float, and then uh, as you saw the base and then let's just call it the length to have a um, 3D object. Okay, so then the perimeter as we saw it's just gonna be the height so t dot height multiplied by t dot base and then divided by two so that's a uh, float operation and we return that the height here which is a bit confusing but we named it length so we are just gonna return the length so then t dot length so we have a, a, an object which is complying to that object interface uh, on line 6. So just to show you how we would implement and consume all those um, methods and objects. So let's just define a, a triangle. So triangular object, uh, then height, base, length. So let's just put 1, 2, 3 for the sake of example. So then let's mount a volume calculator. So then um, a volume calculator uh, would take uh, an object. So here you have volume calculator, then object, and then let's just send the triangle. There you go. Um, 
Okay, so then we can just uh, invoke the volume method on this volume calculator. So volume calculator dot volume. Uh, we can uh, log that um, that value. Okay, so you there you have so one times two divided by two multiplied by three, so three. Okay, so we do have an implementation uh, of that object, and we just use the abstracted um, volume calculator. So just um, to fully understand, let's create an object, another object which is exposing these two um, interfaces, these two methods to fully understand the, the power of that design pattern. So let's define this time a rectangular object. So X is one side, Y is another side, and let's call Z the height of this uh, rectangular object. So um, very simply, so if we just implement that, the, param the parameter will be X r dot x times uh, multiplied by r dot y and then the height will simply be um, z r dot z that's it and you don't have to redefine the volume basically um, another um, so let me show you how you would um, consume that so that's same as the triangle so let's define a rectangle so rectangle uh, equal then a rectangular object. So then uh, let's just fill something for X, Y, and Z. There you go. So here, um, if main is your program running um, in production, so um, what I'm doing now is just to show you that can be a config. So X is a parameter. So um, it's just a number just for the sake of an example and then you can define um, a variable called object which is the interface and depending on your config uh, it can be your server config or front-end config for instance if x for instance is uh, greater than 2 then the object will be a triangle if not it will be a rectangle and you can see that in the volume calculator you can just pass that object after its instantiation after the config so x uh, is equal to 1, so then it's a rectangle, so you can see uh, the, the log uh, being to the rectangle, and if uh, I put it uh, 4, it's back to the rectangle, and then 0 back to rectangle again. Okay, let's um, summarize a bit what we just saw. So uh, the blue post-it uh, are the benefit of this uh, bridge pattern. So obviously um, you saw the triangular and the rectangular implementation. So in real life example, that must that could be something more complicated and convoluted. So two separate teams could work on each of those uh, family of objects. Uh, it could be APIs, databases, or whatever. Second one is um, that the feature, the volume one, was calculated one and only one time. So again, in real life, um, the example was trivia trivial, but in real life, that might be something more complicated and very complicated to test and something costly to develop, right? So that's a huge benefit here. And then uh, lastly, the last benefit that we saw together was the um, example with the config, you could see that it can change at runtime. So uh, an example would be uh, if you're developing a game where different shapes um, need to appear on the screen and a feature need, needs to be calculated in a dynamic way, that would be a, a good pattern to adopt. And then um, a bit of uh, cons, so obviously um, the example was very simple, but if uh, you are dealing with several families and several features, you can see there's a lot of indirection there. So the code might uh, look a bit complicated in the end. All right, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. Um, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. And I will say um, see you for the next design pattern then. And happy coding.